Okay, we have here today another interesting integral from the MIT integration B 2017. This one was problem 14. We have the integral from zero to pi over two, square root of sine x plus one dx. And this is a problem I did almost a year ago, but in the comments there was an interesting alternative method suggested by Kevin, and I wanted to try it out that way and see how it goes. So for my first step I'm gonna do is we're gonna use these bounds and we're gonna add the bounds together, essentially zero plus pi over two, and then subtract x. This is the same thing as saying x is gonna be equal to pi over two minus u. I'll take my derivative here and we find that dx is gonna be minus du. We'll just go ahead and substitute. So plugging in pi over two, we get zero. And if I plug a zero in here, I have pi over two. Now for the sine x value, when I plug this in, this is actually gonna be the complementary angle formula. So sine of pi over two minus u, this here is the same thing actually as just cosine of u. So I'll switch that in a minute. We'll have our plus one, and then for dx, we're gonna have minus du. Then you may have guessed it, I'm gonna take the minus sign, bring it out front, and we'll just use that minus to flip our bounds. So now the bounds are gonna go back like the original, and so now we're going from zero to pi over two. And next what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna rewrite this. And how I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do a big square root sign. So we're gonna have cosine u plus one. And then what I wanna do here, I'm actually gonna do something a little mysterious. We'll divide by two here, but I'll multiply by two right here, so I'm not changing it, so I just multiplied by one. But then what I can do with this two here, it's inside the square root, I'm just gonna take that out as a constant value. So I'll just take that out front and write a square root of two outside the integral. And then what you may notice, what we have right here, this is actually very similar to our half angle formula for cosine. So we have the half angle formula down here to the right, and you'll see it's pretty much the same thing, but the one thing we need to be concerned with or just kind of keep track of is we have this plus or minus on it right here. So when I go ahead and rewrite this as cosine of u over two, the only thing I need to do here when I do this, I'm just gonna put absolute value sign around it. So that way we know we can't forget about this plus minus. But now just evaluating this thing right here, but let's just notice for this cosine of x over two, we just wanna know when's that gonna be greater than or equal to zero. Well, of course, cosine's periodic, so it's gonna be greater than zero all over the place. So we just notice if x over two is between zero and pi over two, then cosine's positive, because that's just the first quadrant. But if I multiply through here by two on everything, we could also say that x is gonna be less than or equal to pi and greater than or equal to zero. And so looking at our bounds, our bounds are between zero and pi over two. So we're definitely within this region right here. So what's gonna happen here is this cosine expression it's always gonna be positive, and so we can just drop our absolute value sign. We don't have to worry about that. But now this is gonna be really easy to integrate. Integral of cosine u over two is just gonna give me sine of u over two, but let's not forget the two in the denominator, so we'll bring a two out front here. And then also I got that square root of two that I forgot, so let's bring that square root of two back right there. And we just need to evaluate this from zero to pi over two. Now at zero, sine of zero is going to zero, so we won't worry about that. We're gonna have our two square root of two here, then plugging in pi over two, this is gonna be sine of pi over four. Well, sine at pi over four, that's just gonna be the same thing as square root of two over two, or I can actually write it as one over square root of two. But then the square root of twos cancel. We're just left with our final solution, just two. Okay, good problem, really like that method. Thanks again, Kevin. Thanks everyone for watching, have a great day.